Hello there, it's me Sari here again and today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about die cutting and using die cuts in a different way or more ways I could say. I'm going to start off with this beautiful figure here. This is a die or a set of dies that I've actually used from Nelly Snellen and they are called either Fantasy Flower 1 or two. And the second one has got a sort of a snowflakey theme. You could do partial die cutting with them or you could die cut the complete layout of the die set itself. itself. But you could also do other things with your die cuts and that is something that I figured out when I got this. These two sets of dies from Michaela Scrappin. I'm thanking you Michaela from the bottom of my heart because you have opened my eyes when it comes to using dies in different ways. So what I'll be starting off with is just using my metal or a magnetic plate on my big shot here and then I'm going to place my cutting plate there. Well this one is rather torn and warped so I had better choose another one I suppose. One that is hasn't got that much work done on it. And then I'm just going to take a piece of paper. I'm very partial to watercolouring paper and in this case I'm using a piece of paper that I have got in a C and CC hobby. It's a sort of a crafts store where you can place your orders on the internet. And I could Put that link down below because I do like to buy these watercolouring papers from them. They are 300 grams and they've got a really nice texture to them. So here is one die that is actually going to cut the outer shape of it. And how can you see which die does the cutting on the outer part and which one doesn't? Well, in this case it has got a sort of a knife, let's say. It's a knife that cuts through the paper. So when I'm placing it on my magnetic platform, it's just going to stay there. It's going to give me some more control over where I'm going to place my die. And when it comes to the second die, you see there isn't a knife going along the outer side. Well, that is the case uh, in this one. And but you do have some knives that go around those petite uh, decora decorative parts there. So if I'm going to put that die down like so, you see it's just going to stick so nicely to this, to this magnetic sheet. And what I thought I'd show you, let's see if I can find it. Let's say I were to settle for just these two dies. I could be getting something similar to this and then this one could be looking like a doily or something. You could leave the space empty just for stamping perhaps or die cutting a circle or something just to get something there to make this one come to life in a different way. But I'm going to continue. I'm not, I haven't given up yet. So I'm going to take another die. You know what? I have to correct myself. Had I stopped here, I would have been getting this. So in this case, I'm actually using three dies to get this shape out. But now I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to take this one in the center. And then I've got the final one. And in order to keep these in place, since I have to run these through quite a few times, since the paper itself is rather thick and, um, or heavy, perhaps I could say, it's not thick in the head, is it? I might be because I can't find the end of this one. Well, let's see. And um, I'm going to take a piece of washi tape and I'm just going to drag a long piece enough to cover the complete die set. Hopefully I've got enough there to keep it in place. And uh, I'm just going to take my cutting pad and start rolling. But before I do that, 
I'm actually going to add on a piece of a metal sheet because I do, or a shim, I could say, because I do know that this one is going to need quite a bit of work. And since I know that, I might actually turn this one over from the get-go, actually, because then I will have more control over and see when it has done its die cutting properly. I hope that the tape made it stick to its place and let's see and it's getting rather tough now as it should be and if I don't run it through completely I might be able to get it to reverse sometimes when it has gone through with a bang you can't really reverse it so you had better try so now that I have done the die cutting twice you can see the result here and I do believe that it has done its job rather well, but to be on the safe side, I'm just going to shift this a little bit there because the more you use your die cutting machine and your dies and everything, the more they wear. So I'm just going to do a third run through and I believe that I'm, I'm actually there. And you can see that it has started to lift off from the die itself, so that's a good sign, I think. Just got to take that metal paint away and stow away these things, like so. So now, <coughs> I'm just going to take away this, and you see that the tape is actually, in this case, rather easy to remove. I'm just going to throw it away because I can't be bothered with it right now. And I've got uh, myself and uh, my own die cutting storage system going on there. And I do believe that I've got a video for that. I'm not sure if I have actually a tutorial. Well, in this case, the dies have stayed in their place and they haven't shifted. So it's rather easy actually to just take away these bits and pieces. I'm not going to take away everything, I believe, because I believe that a video would be just a little bit too long, or perhaps not. You see, it's rather quick work, I must say. And, you know, the paper itself feels really nice because it's so thick and with a lovely st structure or texture. So I do like to go back to this piece of paper and I usually actually buy these in a sets of 100, 100 sheets at a time. And at times this Swedish uh, hobby shop actually has some discounts and then I actually buy five of those stacks. And you can see, understand how much they weigh when you get 500, 500 sheets of paper that weigh 300 grams each. That could be nice rather heavy I must say. Well, here it is and it feels sturdy enough. I mean this is why I like this paper because it doesn't tear that easily. So I could of course spray this one if I wanted to. I could add on some uh, water mixture with some perfect pearls or something but I thought I'd just share with you how I come, came up with this thing. I hope you can see it somewhat there. So instead of ruining this one, because I do feel like this is such a beautiful example of how I actually came up with this idea, I'm going to take this. But now you see I have forgotten about myself. Well, let's see. This is the die cut that I made. You see, I just have to th make a thing through here, really. Because what I wanted to show you really was the fact that hadn't I taken the outer die itself well then I could have kept the die the die cut in the paper I would actually have this effect and then I would could be able to use this as a stencil or a mask even but let's say let's say I'll go there in a different way I'm hoping I'll be able to explain this to you properly well you see I'm sort of bewildered now. Let's say this one is completely white. You don't see any colours there. And in this case, I have just made this into a card base, sort of. So, I'm, so it's easy for me to just place the paper in there. If I would like to, I could actually fasten it with a piece of washi tape. In this case, I'm just using a 
piece of washi tape that I'm, I don't believe that I'll be using as much. That's why I'm so wasteful with it, throwing it away and everything. But you might actually do better just having a couple of strips of washi tape here and there, just to keep the papers in place and everything, you see. And then you can just tuck it in on the back side there. So when you start working with your distress inks, for example, I mean, there are many inks out there, but I do like the distress inks. I usually go for these round ink blending tools. And I do keep one handle for each color. Not every color, because there are going to be 60 colors out here in, in the end of this year. So just eight or 10 of these which defines actually. So what I'll be doing now is I'm going to take some ink from the ink pad. I'm just going to pounce it. Pounce and pounce on top of this. And in this case, I'm actually going to get a sort of nice looking thing here. You know, I think I'll just go through to the other side there, to the opposite side. Just so I have a little bit of blue here and there. And you know, it's a good thing actually to just tape this one down because then you have your hands free and you can move about without being afraid of this one sliding and slipping. And I'm going to continue with some orange. And I'm just going to, I'm going to pounce it like this. I'm going to take some orange up here as well. And I mustn't forget about the center here. And then I'm going to finish things off with the green one. I just have to make sure that I see where I have put the ink and where I haven't. You could of course spray this as well, but then I believe that since water is so liquid, it might actually go underneath the stencil itself. And then you might get a sort of, not as perfect look as you might get here. So in this case, I see that I haven't actually taken as much orange as I need. So I'll go back and I'll pound some more. Hopefully I have done enough. It might be a bit problematic since I do have another color scheme going on there since before. I could play it safe and just try to lift it up a little just to see where everything is at. Not sure if I'll be able to show it to you, but you can see that it has actually covered all the bits and places that I want to. So I might as well just take these away. And if I'm clever enough, I might hold on to these once more. And just using a bit of tape here is also a nice way of actually making sure that you got, don't get any colour outside the, the, the end of this paper here. So in this case you actually get a really nice imprint. So you could say that you are stamping with your die cut stencil. So that's a nice method of actually doing that. So let's say I were to do the opposite way. Let's say I were to use this piece of a die cut. I could go for the back side here. What would happen if I were to pounce on top of it? And now I have to make sure that I'm not going to leave, I'm going to lose the position of that because I did that in another video and, well, it was a little bit of shifting. At least there was a risk for it. And you know, you could go a little bit outside if you want a complete look, just you see, this is what I'm talking about. Well, since I believe that I might be able to sort of get it there, but then again, a little bit of shifting might not be the end of the world either because you could get a nice effect by that somehow, I'm sure. And um, just going to take a little bit more here just to see what kind of reaction and action I'm going to get here.
And let's see. Keep your fingers crossed now. I'm just going to turn it over. And I'm not really that careful either. I'm rather fearful here, I must say. I'm just going to take it on the half of the doily here. So you might as well actually drag the colour out. Let's see what kind of a difference that would make. So in this case you would actually get the negative. You would get this bit that you can see die cut here. This would stay white and whatever you colour in after that will give you a nice background. So this is a nice and another te technique. And of course if you wanted to, you could put the biggest die here and die cut this piece. Let's do that because I haven't done that yet. I have to make sure that I can fit this into the machine and it's a little bit too big. Touch and go here really. And in this case I'm not going to be needing any extra I believe because this is a really simple shape. So what I have to do now is just, I'm going to place it on the outside, make sure that it's sort of even, evenly spaced out, and I'm just going to run it through. And you see, in this case it shifted and I was lucky enough to see it actually. So I shouldn't rush about too much I suppose. Note to self. Let's see if I can make it work this time. Place it gently, have a look-see, and run it through. Ta-da! It's a nice idea, isn't it? So, let's see, what should I recap about these dies? And, what I wanted to sort of shout out to you is that if you have any other dies that you might sort of incorporate in this method, then go for it. You might actually find out something really fun. So let's see. I have, in this case, made this one, which was new for me to, for today. You could colour this one and you could spray it and you could use Inca gold. You could use just anything you fancy. You can partially die cut with these dies. And if you wanted to, let's see if I have something left here. You could just make this into a really spectacular looking clean and simple card with just this die cut on the front and then you could do the greeting on the back side because if you do the greeting on the inside well it's going to be shown through now isn't it and you know what, might not have that pretty a handwriting that you want to showcase that in the in the in the first place you could of course place a pattern piece of paper on the back side like so glue it down and then just have it as a regular piece of a card and um, here is another example. You could also use the shape which I die cut this one with to make it into a card base. So that card can stand on its own. And you could go on glittering your pieces here and there. I've glittered the flowers there. And as, you, as I told you before, you could place some sort of a colored piece of paper in the background and just place it there and here is a really this is the first attempt i made with the stamping with the star die cut stencil and i just got these colors on craft cardstock isn't that fabulous i just fell in love with this idea actually and just to keep things simple i i can see myself placing a really small strip with a saying here and that would be enough i wouldn't want to do anything more with it actually so Definitely have a look see at the Nelly Snell and Dyes called Fantasy Flower or Stained Glass. And you know one thing, one more thing. Let's say, let's say I had two of these and I would like to place 
let's hope this is the right mat for it it isn't completely the right mat but let's say I had a piece of paper it could be colored it could be one colored and then I would place the other one on the other side and I could make decorations out of these to hang in my Christmas tree perhaps or in the window so you just take your imagination and let it lead you somewhere where you haven't been before and I think it's time for me to sign off and I wish you a happy happy crafty day. Bye-bye.